What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. Welcome, little newbies. Alright guys, in this video I figured I'd go over kind of the basic stuff that you need to get started with your laser engraver. So I'm in several dialed laser discussion groups and this question comes up quite often. What else do I need besides the laser to get started? People even go as far as to try to anticipate the things that they need before they even get their laser. And those people are planners and they are not welcome here. Fly by the seat of your pants or get out. Just kidding, you do you boo. So I have taken some notes. not a notebook. <laughs> Cause we fancy. Behold the Apple Pencil. You don't need this. Just looking for my notes. Do, 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 do. First and foremost, let's talk safety. These things that come with every diode laser are garbage. Throw them away immediately. They give you the least amount of protection for your eyeballs. To do want to invest in is something like these guys. I can't think of a YouTube song right now. Okay, so the nerd facts on the nerd glasses are, uh, these are free mascot professional uh, laser goggles. They are within the spectrum of 190 nanometers to 550 nanometers. I will link to them down below. I don't necessarily have to get these particular ones, but just know that these are within the spectrum of most diode lasers. For instance, the X-Tool D1, my go-to laser, uh, the wavelength is between 450 and 460, so it falls into that range. So if you're using a CO2 or a fiber, you need to know the wavelength in nanometers, and then I'm gonna put a website down below um, that will show you the best goggles for each one of those. It kind of explains the different wavelengths and things like that. It's interesting if you are into that kind of thing. But the biggest rule of thumb is if it's a visible spectrum laser so you can actually see the beam, if you have a pair of safety goggles on and you can still see the beam, you're not getting 100% protection. When I put these on and turn that on, I cannot see a beam come out of the laser. If I put those green ones on, I can. With that information, you cannot see a CO2 or fiber laser. So make sure to check that website and get the proper eye protection. Okay, while we're talking about safety, this is the one thing that nobody wants to buy that you should buy. <laughs> and that is a fire extinguisher. Now, this is a regular fire extinguisher. This is not the best one to have for your laser. The best one to have for your laser is a CO2 fire extinguisher. The one that comes most highly recommended is a Halotron fire extinguisher. This is the one I have in the shop. I have a Halotron upstairs with my CO2 laser and I'm just too lazy to go get it. It looks similar to that. I will link it down below. They are not cheap. They're like anywhere from like 150 to 250. The reason you want this kind of fire extinguisher is because it won't damage laser components when you use it. So you may actually be able to save the unit if a fire breaks out. Like I said, fire extinguishers are not sexy and you hope you never have to use them, but you should always have them. You should never leave your laser unattended while it's running, but I understand sometimes you gotta go, you know, scarf down some food. Or you've got to pay the toilet gods their toll. So what I do is I have just one of these little security cameras, an Amazon Blink camera, and I literally just set it right on the laser, point it at the laser, and I pull it up on my phone on an app so I can watch it when I'm not in the room. Next up is an enclosure. Now, if you're gonna build your own, wait until you get your laser. I do not have an enclosure on my laser, and that's because I haven't gotten around to making one yet. We'll link to a couple of enclosures that you may wanna check out below. So Xtool has one coming soon. I don't think they have it listed on their website yet. If they do, I will put the link down there, but I think it's still coming soon. Comgro has a really cost effective one that's about 70 bucks. It's a soft enclosure, but it is flame retardant. And I've seen a lot of people use the Atom Stack one that I'll put down below as well, uh, but that one's gonna run you about three, 400 bucks. So it's an all metal enclosure. Uh, I believe it does fit the, the D1. Make sure that it's gonna fit your, your laser before you order one of these. Okay, one thing everybody's gonna need is a spoil board of some sort. I recommend just going to your big box store and getting a two by two piece of half inch plywood. Fit on there, you'll have enough room around it. And especially if you're just engraving, you can just burn a grid onto that board and Robert's your dad's brother. 
This is my spoil board. As you can see, it's gotten a little bit of use. And I just downloaded this file from Buster Beagle 3D. I'll link that down below too. But basically it runs a grid and then you've got, you know, your concentric squares that go in further and further. And if you're doing a lot of white tiles, Sometimes this happens. So if you're gonna be laser cutting as well as laser engraving, you really wanna invest in a honeycomb. Now, I know some people, when they first start out, they use like a, a, like a cooking sheet and things like that. The biggest issue with those is they're not always level. So eventually you're really gonna to wanna to look into like an actual honeycomb. So this is a full-size honeycomb. This one's from Xtool. I can link this down below as well. And it does come with this metal backer board, which is really helpful. A lot of them don't. It's nice to have this. And then it just has these little rubber feet that you put on here to kind of protect the edges and lift this up off of that metal plate just a little bit. Now that honeycomb is a little pricey. And I know like right when you're buying a laser, you may not want to spend 120 bucks on a honeycomb. So I would point you towards this alternative to get you started. This is a honeycomb that's made by a viewer actually. We'll link to his Etsy page down below. This is a little over half the size of that one, I think. Um, I think it's 12 by 12. And then he just ships out a little piece of thin wood to put underneath it. And it runs about 60 bucks, so about half the price. Next up, if you're gonna be doing cutting is you want to have air assist. This is the air assist for the 20 watt. This is actually Xtools air assist, which I'll link down below. And to be honest, the air assist on the 20 watt from Xtool works great. My air assist on the 10 watt didn't work all that great. I had a problem getting, getting it <coughs> aimed correctly. So I picked up this 3D printed number um, from Kobe over at Geeks at Large. I'll link him down below as well. Basically with this one, you just pick up the air assist, which I think is like 20, 30 bucks. And then you wanna pick up uh, uh, an air pump. I will link to one down below that is comparable to the X tool one. It's my understanding you can also pick up an air pump at Harbor Freight. I just don't know anything about that. So if anybody knows about the Harbor Freight one, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and I'll pin it. Okay, next up, um, I like to have some measuring utensils in the shop. So I have some of these little rulers laying around that are metric on one side and imperial on the other. And when I say I got a few, <laughs> I lose these all the time. I also have just a cheap pair of calipers. Basically, a lot of times I wanna make sure that I know what thickness of material I'm cutting or trying to cut. You can always do this and open the jaws. What some people don't realize about calipers though is that you can also measure by running this little guy out in the bottom and see how far you are away from stiff. So. That comes in handy sometimes, especially if it's in focus. Boop, boop. All right guys, and before we head on to more stuff, I just wanna say thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you guys for subscribing. I, we, we've got a lot of new faces going on lately. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. And we've had a lot of activity going on over at Patreon lately. We do have some new patrons. So I'd like to give a single shout out to Ricky Boyd, Ryan Vader, and Gigi to four? Honey bear, at ya. <laughs> but I would like to say thanks to all of my patrons. These guys are the ones that keep the lights on in the shop. Especially my Boilermaker or top tier patrons. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Andy the Viking, Dwight Smith, Todd Stewart, Paul Christensen, Jason Ayers, and our newest Boilermaker, Reed Means. That's a, that's a, Double honey bear if I ever heard of one. Boop. All right, back to it. Another nice to have, not super laser specific, but I do use it with a lot of my projects, is some CA glue. This is by Starbond. Um, and I use the medium and the thick stuff mostly. Guys, if you're using CA glue, get yourself some accelerator. This stuff is a lifesaver. Instead of having to wait for the stuff to bond, it'll bond it in about, I think it's like 10 seconds or something. So you put this on one side, you put this on the other, you slap it together and you got yourself a glue sandwich. And here's something I tell everybody, get yourself a notebook and a pen that you can kind of carry around with you. And here's why. Once you get your perfect settings, you wanna write those down someplace. So I have this just to jot things down in, and then I actually keep a database on my computer, but you wanna be able to write stuff down because sometimes you're, you, like, you'll get the perfect settings, you'll do the thing, and then it's the end of the day, you take off, you turn your computer off, and you lose your settings. Write them down, write them down. So I just buy these little field books because they're kind of cheap and I can just toss them when I'm done. And then I know you guys are all gonna want my cool space pen. It's this big and like if you need to use it, you can whip it out, kids, whip it out. Uh, but it's real easy to just kind of tuck in your pocket. Walk around with a 
and stick me in the leg all the time. And then you're gonna wanna buy some material. I will link to Xtools material. They have, a, they have a decent amount of material available if you wanna check their stuff out. I get all my thin hardwood from Okooch Hardwoods. It's the name of the place. I'll put the link down below. I get all my acrylic from Houston Acrylic. They have some crazy stuff. I mean, this isn't crazy, this is just orange, but um, they have all sorts of different crazy color combinations and stuff like that. Uh, they ship really fast. Good stuff. The majority of the other sellable material that I use, I get from Amazon because I can't find any wholesalers that, that do it any cheaper unless I want to buy like 500 or 1,000 of something. So I get my skinny tumblers on Amazon. I get my stainless steel flasks on Amazon. And I get my painted flasks on Amazon as well. I'll put the links to all that stuff down below. I'm not doing any sort of volume that, to where it justifies me to have you know, 500 of something sitting someplace. Order in like 20s. <laughs> and then a couple other housekeeping things is you, just for maintenance purposes, uh, make sure you have some white lithium grease on hand for your rails. I usually maintenance my lasers about every two weeks. So I use this stuff just to make sure that I don't have any stuttery spots or anything. And I picked up this up a while back. It, it had nothing to do with the laser at the time, but I use it all the time with the laser. And that is one of these guys. It is a rechargeable uh, compressed air kind of thing. I mean, it's just a fan, but. So you can blow all the dust and stuff out. And then instead of having to buy cans of compressed air all the time, you buy this once and you can recharge it. All right, guys, that's all I can think of that you might want to pick up like right before you get your laser or right after you get your laser. But I'm sure you guys out there have already thought of something that I forgot. So if you could do me a favor, put that in the comments down below, would ya? All right guys, that's it, short and sweet. Hope that helps. Now, thanks for playing. And I've got to get to work. Woo! Sweet dreams are made of these. What the fuck did I say? Oh, my pen.